You're probably familiar with the feeling of opening your fridge and finding only one or two different kinds of food inside of it. And then you just think of plenty of different meals to make by using the same couple of ingredients. Unfortunately, this feeling is far too common in my case. Let me start from the beginning. It was a boring day as usual. I was just walking back home after a quick trip to the nearby grocery store. I quickly got to my house and started unlocking the front door. However, before I could open the door, someone lightly tapped me on my right shoulder. I quickly turned around in confusion and saw a man in his late 20s or early 30s. He was smiling and seemed to be wearing an expensive black suit with a matching black tie. His eyes were hidden under a pair of gold-plated sunglasses. Everything about him was screaming, high class. Hey, take this! The stranger said while slipping a bag into my hand. I instinctively looked inside of the bag and saw five lemons. They weren't your average lemons you find at the supermarket. These were twice or almost three times the size of the ones I was used to. Even the color was amazing. <laughs> I could have sworn they were glowing. Temporarily, my mind was in a state of shock. As soon as I looked at the bag, it was like I was hypnotized. Instead of asking the man for any sort of explanation, I, I, I could only mutter a simple thanks before I took the bag and entered my house. I locked the front door and took another look at the bag of lemons. Whatever was on my mind before the encounter with the stranger was quickly replaced with the urge to make a lemonade. I took one of the extremely large lemons and swiftly cut it in half. The juice immediately started bursting out of it. It seemed to be succulent and full of flavor. Before I could move on to the next step, the same mysterious man I saw earlier appeared right in front of me. I was frozen solid by the instant mix of fear and shock. How did you get in my house if I just locked the front door? I thought to myself, yet I, I was unable to ask him that question. It, it was like the particular aura of this person had rendered me unable to speak. You must be confused. Let me explain. He spoke with a cheery tone. You see, we're not the same. I won't bore you with the long and unnecessary explanation of what kind of creature I am. No, instead, I'll just tell you the most important part. Your sustenance is food and water. Mine is human suffering. He spoke with the exact same cheery yet flat tone. I could only listen while slowly processing what he was saying. That being said, I must find a way of making humans suffer. And then I feed off of that suffering. As simple as that sounds, it's an absolute pain to accomplish. He said with a slightly annoyed expression on his face. Sure, I could just take a hammer and break your bones and that would make you suffer, right? Well, that's the worst kind of suffering, the boring kind. Think of it this way. A raw egg and an omelet are basically the same thing, but you won't just eat a raw egg. The omelet tastes better, and it also has no chance of infecting you with salmonella, the stranger says as he giggles. So, in other words, I have to raise the quality of the suffering before consuming it. That's why you're going to be my test subject. With a bit of luck, you're going to produce a completely unique type of suffering for me, he explains while pointing at me. I just put a curse on you, and the only way to undo the curse is to last at least 21 days while under the effects of the curse. Here's the rules you're going to follow strictly from now on. Don't leave your home. If you try to, I'll just teleport you back to your living room. You also won't be able to communicate with anyone. If you try to, I'll make the person you tried talking to disappear. You're only allowed to consume lemons, actually. I'll be a nice fellow, so I'll allow sugar and water as well. While you're under the effect of the curse, consuming anything other than the items I just listed will immediately kill you. However, if you're still alive after that 21 days pass, I will come and devour the suffering you've accumulated. Then I will remove the curse. After that, I will make sure you can finally start eating something other than lemon meals. He finishes his explanation. Oh, I almost forgot. Even though your food and drink choices are limited, I made sure to give you unlimited amounts of lemons, water, and sugar. Every time you open your refrigerator, you will notice that it's full of fresh lemons, ice-cold water, white and brown sugar, he says with a smirk. Good luck. I believe in you. The stranger instantly disappears without a trace as soon as he finishes the sentence. I start doubting if, if what I experienced was real, but soon enough, 
I realize the severity of the situation I am currently in. I open the fridge, exactly as the stranger said. Inside of it, I find dozens of huge lemons, glass bottles of almost frozen water, and bags of sugar. I take one lemon and one bottle out of the fridge and close the fridge door. And then I open it once again. As expected, the two lemons and one bottle of water are instantly replaced by an identical copy. Out of desperation, I tried leaving my house to no avail. Every time I touched the doorknob, I would temporarily go blind like I was falling asleep. And then when my vision returned a couple seconds later, I would realize that I'm now in my living room. I could either try thinking of ways to survive three weeks on a diet consisting of only three things, or I, I could try leaving my house again and again until I die from exhaustion or starvation. Obviously, yeah. I chose the first option, even though I knew my chances of survival were low at best. My first couple of days on this new diet went fairly well. The main meal was lightly sweetened peeled lemons. I would snack on those almost all day, even though I got tired of them after like five bites. Beggars can't be choosers, right? Around five days passed, and I was already beginning to feel the side effects of eating only lemons. Even though I was almost constantly chewing on my signature peeled sweet lemon snack, I felt like that wasn't enough to kill my hunger. In fact, my stomach was grumbling so much that I could barely even sleep. I changed my strategy. Since eating just peeled lemons wasn't enough, I tried drinking as much water as I can to trick my stomach to think it's full. I drank so much that I had to bite on raw lemons to stop myself from vomiting. I started using the lemon peels as well. I, I found a couple of easy candied lemon peel recipes, so I started eating those as well. The taste was somewhat different, so that was an improvement, as I was getting sick of the same old sweet-peeled lemons. Two weeks passed, and the ulcers started. I guess eating just highly acidic fruits for weeks isn't something my body was built to handle because of my inflamed and bloody lips covered in open sores. I avoided looking at myself in the mirror. Eighteen days passed. Even though I was so close to my goal, I was almost sure that I wouldn't make it. My mouth ulcers became so bad that eating a lemon or even drinking lemonade became impossible. It was like pouring salt on an open wound. To avoid any additional pain, I completely stopped eating lemons. My new diet consisted of only drinking cold water, which barely helped me soothe the jolting pain. Finally, it was the 21st day. I felt like my life could turn off like a light switch at any moment. I was severely malnourished. My energy levels were fully depleted. I could barely make two steps before I felt like I needed to go to sleep. And yet when I tried sleeping, I would immediately get woken up by a burst of pain or I'd start choking on the blood dripping from my swollen lips. I stopped keeping count, but I bet I didn't sleep at all for at least five or six days. Even my vision deteriorated. I would constantly drop my water bottles because everything was getting simply too blurry to see. They would shatter on the floor and I just ignored them because I didn't have the strength needed to pick up the glass fragments and throw them out. After about an hour or so, I'd forget that there's glass shards on the floor and I'd step on them or cut my feet because it at least helped me forget about the ulcer pain, which was much worse. I didn't want to give up, but my body was too worn out. I collapsed on the glass covered floor. The shattered glass pricked and cut my dry skin. I couldn't even get up on my feet, so I decided to just accept my fate and wait until I perish. This whole ordeal was suffering far above anything I could ever imagine. Death was my only saving grace. I was eagerly expecting it. Suddenly, the stranger appeared in front of me. He placed his hand on top of my head and proudly said, Congratulations, you survived! No longer than three seconds passed, and I felt all the pain, exhaustion, and hunger leave my body. Not only did I not feel any discomfort, I felt great. Better than I ever felt in my life. It was, it was like I was reborn. The stranger moved his hand away from my head and said, Thank you, as I expected, your suffering was delicious, far better than anything I've ever tasted. As you can see, you are already completely healed, yet I didn't remove the curse yet. I'm in a bit of a hurry, so I will fully remove it tomorrow. And then, as we discussed earlier, you will be able to eat something other than lemon meals, he said while patting me on the back. I'm a kind soul, so I will remove part of the curse now. 
You're free to leave your house, go take a walk, grab some fresh air. You deserve it. I'll be back tomorrow to fully undo the curse. I'm sure you can't wait to eat something other than boring old lemons. He finished talking and immediately disappeared once again. All things considered, I felt like a winner. I spent the rest of the day sitting at the nearby park, enjoying life, now more than ever. I fell asleep on the park bench. I woke up the next morning feeling revitalized. I checked my pockets and found out that I had some money on me. And quickly, I went to a nearby fast food place and bought as many cheeseburgers as I could. I nervously waited for the stranger to appear to undo the curse so I could finally eat something other than annoying yellow fruit. About ten minutes passed, and I felt an all-too-familiar tap on my shoulder. I turned around to see the stranger, now holding a bag of large oranges. Thanks so much for listening, guys. A quick shout out to my patrons. Kevin Kess, Sabiel Eclipse, 055555, Cormac Wells, Amara, Matthew Steiner, Cupcake Kips, Alonzo, Mr. Sankofa, Michael Milburn, Kozak, Icy Narrates, Jesse Hartley, Eric Zafuentes, Andreas Anderson London, Lawrence Wallen, Geek Sanctuary, Melissa Perez, and this guy. <laughs> that is someone's actual username. I love that. Thanks again so much for watching, guys. If there's anything you would like me to pray for, I would love to know how I can be praying for you. I hope you have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next video.